Um, but mm. my question is, um, where do you think the your passion lies, and where do you think that you know you would be best utilized uh, working for Jagex? Like, what area of the game, or is there something specifically that you would like to give more attention to? Um. For me, really, like, passion-wise, I'm obsessed with, like, early and mid-game routing. I love, like, neat, like, macro-efficient progression and stuff like that. Like, I love looking at, like, some like stuff like Boti or Alfie or Osiris's Iron Man guys, etc. Like, stuff like that. I love, like, that kind of... I guess, like, the way in which people, like, break the game down for, like, routing. Like, I like that kind of efficiency quite a lot. Yeah. Um... But like the mid game, especially, is like probably what I'm like actually more interested in. I think it's like a real, it's like a real like crucial point of the game in general. Like that kind of, you know, maybe you're in like the your stats are kind of sitting between like sixty and seventy five, and suddenly shit starts to take a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And I think that most people who have like made like a handful of Iron Men, especially in like the times before Gauntlet, will probably lament like the mid game grind to eighty seven Slayer etc. to like unlock the game and stuff. Yeah. Like, that's, weirdly, that's, like, the part of the game that, like, interests me the most. And, like, group content especially. I don't think we do... With, like, the Rise of Iron Man, I don't think there's enough of a diversity of group content as I'd like from an MMO, which is maybe, like, a spicy take. A lot of people just like to play solo, right? But maybe, like, I think TOA gets the balance kind of right there. Like, solo is viable, but I don't think it's the most efficient necessarily, but it's not inefficient per se. Yeah. You know, I, I get asked a question quite a lot. And I, I tell you my complete transparency here. I, I haven't been a mid-game level player for about three or four years now. Is in I haven't had an account in that bracket in years, so I haven't been playtesting the content that came out. Um, God, I don't know what the spider boss is called on Zaya. Is it like Sanchoziv or something like that? Sorachnus. <laughs> Sorachnus. Sorac like yeah, yeah. Think of Soracha, bro. <laughs> so. I I get asked all the time, people are like, Rixie, uh, I've been doing the Barrows. What, what, what's the next <laughs> what's the what's the next natural progression of boss for me to go to? And I'm like, in, in my mind, there's like a disconnect. I'm like, where do you go from the Barrows upwards? It's like Dagonoff Kings, maybe, but it's a bit of a leap from Barrows to DKs. So I guess if that's the place where you, you know, you're interested in, uh, do Jagex have any future plans for maybe some sort of like mid-tier level bosses that are coming our way or anything along those lines or am i just yeah. mistaken where i haven't been there for such a long time that there already is bro moss giant boss baby maybe you'd know what came next if rice cup had done part two for his pvm ladder right <laughs> <laughs> yeah one day, <laughs> one, day um, one day but <laughs> i don't th i don't i don't know that there's anything like immediately in the oh, works i just like i Early game and mid game to me, even like non like it's difficult to get it's difficult to get friends who have never played RuneScape into RuneScape because it's like you know you play four hundred hours and then we can do some shit together, <laughs> yeah. uh, or I have to like you know like put ankle weights on and just play really slowly to kind of like keep in line with you right yeah um and I think especially MMOs for like a lot of like word of mouth you know like so many people get into MMOs or like any game these days because they have like a friend who plays maybe like the boys are all playing. Maybe maybe their like partner plays or something like that, and they just want to, you know, try it out. And I think that's like difficult with old school. So I think like the activity advisor or it is the activity advisor. Yeah, it has like a different name yeah. internally. I just got it. Pulling it right. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, too. I mean, it was rolled out to everyone this week, right? But like yeah, stuff like that, it. I think is actually kind of important. Um, and just like content that I think keeps players engaged all the way through. Um, so nothing immediately in the works, but it's like on my first Q and A. Uh, appearance where I didn't say much because I was on with like Ash, Aiza, and Kira, and nobody gave a single fuck what I was talking about. <laughs> I was with Ash, Kira, and Aiza. The gods. Like, I'll answer my questions and I'll sit quietly. But um, they asked like if I could add anything, what would I add? And um, I I keep thinking about like Demonheim, not Dungeoneering, but just like Demonheim in general is this kind of like this like super scalable um through like all stages of the game, piece of like group procedural content that you can use as like a constant check mark of like your account's progress, I guess. Like, you know, you went away, you got some like woodcutting levels or something, and now suddenly like when you're in Demonheim with your pals or whatever, you can like chop like a higher tier of tree or something like that, right? Um, that is very true. That is very true. So it's I don't know, like just stuff to do with people 
that like helps you retain your friends in like the early and mid game i think is something that's like quite important and like a little bit slept on which i also yeah. completely understand because i think like a lot of the like louder voices uh really want like you know pvp stuff pvm stuff which is totally fine like i'm happy with either <laughs> but there's this like whole group of players um there's like casual players who are just really difficult to actually like hear from because like i think these kind of casual players they're not even talking on social media etc they're they're just logging in they're vibing they're logging out they're not leaving feedback like they're difficult it's difficult to understand what those people want and yeah. i'd like to find ways of taking more of those people and getting them invested enough to be able to tell us what they think about the game so that we could like grow the game that way yeah, yeah. it never dawned on me that because I always I have a friend that's incredibly bad, but he always wants to play in PK, and I'm like I, I can't PK with you. You're you're too low level. I can't boss <laughs> with your ass. I can't do anything with your ass. You want to do some pest control or something? <laughs> you got the pest a, control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a big disconnect, right? If you have some buddies you want to play with, there's not really much to do. This sounds like an amazing idea. It just dawned on me that that this needs to be in RuneScape. Because there's too many people just not even talking in Edgeville or, you know, fletching their little logs at the bank. You used to be able to go up and just have a nice conversation. Ain't no one talking no more. It's just uh, people playing an EH. What's what's the word? EHP. EHP. Efficient hours yeah. played. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's all it is, man. Back when I used to play, I'd hang out with my boys. We, we wouldn't do anything. We would just sit there, right? But nowadays, you got to do a little something, you know? So I, I would like yeah, to see something like yeah, that happen you, in RuneScape. Yeah, you definitely brought up a good point, though, Ben, about the fact that, yeah, there's definitely a lot of players that, that are just not, you know, you don't hear from them. And and to really tie in with, like, certain updates is, like, you know, a lot of the updates that gets the most controversy, right, tends to be endgame stuff, right? Because, you know, endgame mm. is what typically affects the game massively, right? Whether it's like the resources come from, from it or or the items that will devalue older stuff. But mm -hmm. I think there's definitely a lot of mid-level updates that could happen, right? Which would have a far less negative impact, like, you know, less drama um, from the high-level players because, you know, the, the effect of it is, you know, whether it's resources drops should not be that big of a deal. And, and it's much safer, right? It's also much safer because, like I said, it's just not impacting the game extremely in any real way and i do i do think that there are definitely a lot of players that play this game casually and enjoy playing it casually but they probably could you know do with just more mid-level updates yeah. and and the updates don't necessarily need to be like oh it'll make you level up like a lot faster than before or whatever i think they just have to be engaging things that could give you you know like a little bit better xp or slightly better money than what you what they're used to like and that's pretty much it, right? And then they they could probably just be content with staying there for as long as they need to, because like I think some people are just happy to just play casually, you know, and and they don't really necessarily care about going above because those are the people that you're not going to hear from, you know, because they they just keep to themselves and just you know enjoy whatever minimal time they have. <clears throat> so I think I think those players are important too, even if you don't hear from. Them. But yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like there could be more updates in that range. For sure, I think like Guardians of the Rift is like a perfect example, right? Of something that wasn't like a crazy increase in XP rates, but it's just like more fun than ZMI. Uh, obviously, it's like way worse than something like Lava's, but it's just like engaging. It's like social skilling because you can actually do it and like talk to people. You kind of can with like something like Giant's Foundry as well, but it's like a bit involved. Same with like Winter Todd, kind of actually is okay. And it makes fire making a little bit more interesting than just laying big lines. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, like particularly that, like, um, some, some more mid level. Group bossing could be good. I think yeah, I think sure. you know you can add a lot more, and it'll just not really, you know, people won't talk too much bad things about it because the effects should not be too too negative on on anything. Yeah, really. Yeah, I feel yeah. that it doesn't really move the needle heavily, right? I, exactly, I, I like I, and I think that's always good too. I mean, like woodcutting with the boys, picking flax with the homies. Yeah, that mean. was that was like mod squid's game jam pitch. I think he did uh, mm -hmm. that like way of the forest thing, which was like a return to like social woodcutting. Yeah, um, that would be great. Thing. Yeah, I either like th said in the Twitch chat and like spoke about it a bit. Like something like shooting stars feels like a bit weird that you're punished for doing it with other people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like you get less. Like it's worse the more people are there for shooting stars, right? It should probably not be the case. Like just stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Like 
you're probably never going to see a return to like packed out yew trees just talking about how much you love Linkin Park's Meteora <laughs> album. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I, yeah. There's definitely stuff like I think that's like part of what makes it like good to retain people as well. Just like making them feel like a part of a community by encouraging player to player interaction, which is something that we've maybe lost a little bit with Iron being so popular and with there being so many worlds that if you're in those kind of like mid and early game areas, you don't really bump into many people. 